Hey y'all, Cody Menz doing a what's new video again and you know gonna be talking about the so lack of NA special for this weekend as of right now. Usually it gets posted uh, Fridays and don't say it. Um, we're also gonna talk about rank battles, frontline, the reward tanks, a little bit about the coronavirus and wargaming really and you know basically what's happening in World of Tanks. Um, let's start out with basically what's happening as of uh, right now. So all these links are gonna be in the video description uh, based on the order that you see them. So if you see something you wanna learn a little bit more about, you know, feel free to click the links in the description. Now, starting today, at least on the NA server, I, again, I don't see like a weekend special, but we do have a lot of other stuff going on. Um, so luck of the Irish, uh, St. Patrick's Day is coming up. There's this weird uh, FE, 4202 um, yeah <laughs> it's got a little leprechaun hat on top of it there's a 3d style available in the shop um, yeah it looks interesting but yeah I don't know how how many people are actually going to want to drive around this thing but I guess maybe uh, maybe people will try to shoot the hat and they'll miss because it doesn't count as a basically a part of the hole scorpions also up for sale you know, if you want to buy both scorpions for some reason, uh, you know, you could do that for a crap ton of money. Otherwise, yeah, there's a, a bunch of separate bundles and stuff like that. But yeah, Scorpion G's for sale. Also, the Furies back on sale. So a lot of different sales for different tanks. Now, rank battles start Monday um, for basically every server on PC. Uh, this is your basically final season um, or, you know, final part of the first season, you know, season two. Uh, where you can get the uh, tier 9 leopard it kind of explains it kind of the same go around as last time except for some improvements when it comes to um, matchmaking and stuff like that and roll bonus um, but basically that'll be you know popping up as of monday and if you played the previous season on na and the two seasons on um, or go arounds for the other servers uh, eu are you um, you'll basically need to have played those to have a chance at getting uh, the tier 9 tank here. Also there's some camos, stuff like that. So I'm pretty excited for that because I like tier 10 gameplay. Global map um, is starting, basically I should have scrolled up on this. Starting, it's called Global Map Revolution. Uh, no clan war tanks are given out during this, but you can win bonds, stuff like that. That'll be starting uh, the 25th they announced and running uh, through mid-June. But basically you get some goodies when it comes to metals and uh, bonds and stuff like that and you know some camouflages and stuff so your typical you know clan wars and stuff now twitch prime uh, there's a care package now it's care package battle pass there's going to be you know there's one already out and then there's going to be two others you know popping up honestly like not to say the battle pass care package seems a little bit uh, labeled this incorrectly like you are able to basically play the capture king tiger and you're able to basically get some more points and stuff like that um, from playing it but it just seems kind of weird because i don't think it really does too much if you have a good amount of tanks you're going to be able to do the battle pass anyway but it does give you some missions and some blueprints and stuff just for playing which is nice and a couple of rentals uh, the skoda uh, t27 and t40 uh, both are pretty good tanks and you get some basically loot from it now getting to i'll actually s change my order here fair play policy update so basically they did uh ban uh, some people this is just the na uh, other servers had a lot more given their different uh, basically population sizes so as far as the na servers 324 uh, first warning on the na server but 90 people were permanently uh, banned so awesome battle pass uh really controversial um when it comes to the battle pass like i'll click through it in the garage here uh, my you know i i guess think it's a little bit much to they're basically adding in i look at it as like a separate premium account with the stuff that they add in here uh, you're just basically going to be playing and specifically if you play in the super conqueror and, and the 277 you can earn extra points because those are kind of the like grand prize of uh, they each have a 3d style you only can get one if you don't buy the improved pass uh, but read the article if you're a little confused uh, when it comes down to how it works it does explain everything in 
uh, detail. There's bounty equipment, which is basically bond equipment, the improved equipment. However, if you get it through the battle pass, you then can basically uh, spend credits to upgrade it, uh, more or less, uh, from my understanding. Now, the 3D styles, again, you only can pick one of them, uh, unless you buy the improved pass and then you can get both of them. They look pretty nice, but, you know, at the end of the day, everyone's going to be rolling around in the same thing. <laughs> you, know, at, you know, say three minutes down the road. You can also get a unique uh, commander. Now, my problem with this is basically how they monetize it. Um, so you're able to buy an improved pass for 6,500 gold. Plus, you can, you know, spend an additional 5,000 gold to skip past 20 uh, stages. And in the final month, you can then skip more stages. But basically what's happening is, you know, there's credits, uh, blueprints, um, there's uh, crew booklets, you know, crew skins, unique uh, crews, 3D styles and stuff. And the bounty equipment, uh, kind of a little bit separate from that group. But what you're doing is the free battle pass is kind of nice you know just for everybody because you get free free stuff just for playing you are gonna have to play a lot you know to be able to get through everything however if you buy the improved battle pass which we will uh, get over here it's probably a little bit easier to explain it in the garage here now if you buy the improved battle pass you know you're gonna be able to get this uh, line down here uh, basically extra rewards otherwise you're just gonna be stuck at the top now Part of the concern is basically, as of right now, when it comes to uh, basically the battle pass, you're not able to get the uh, bounty rammer unless you buy the improved battle pass. Otherwise, you're just stuck with the uh, gun laying drive, which is a lot less uh, useful when it comes to a piece of equipment. But if you're looking at all the basically bonuses and stuff you get when it comes to the training booklets and the blueprints, you do get a massive amount of uh, you know blueprints from this. Um, what it looks like is basically, yeah, you get 3D styles, you know, commanders and stuff like that. But with the credits, you know, the premium time, you get little, basically, camouflages and stuff. And the other bonuses that they've thrown in here, it's almost like, you know, they took out a lot of the, so stuff like blueprints from Rewards from Merit. And added that, you know, daily missions in the last patch that we saw. And now they put basically some stuff back in when it comes to blueprints and other little bonuses, you know, when it comes to personal bonuses, credits, and the booklets, they put it back into the battle pass. However, now, like, you know, I guess it's really tough to tell to see the frequency of what you've earned before versus what you're going to be earning now, you know, rewards for merit versus uh, battle pass and daily missions. It's going to be tough to see... Uh, what you're kind of earning, you know, say on a per battle basis or per day. But what I have a problem with is basically, so the improved pass, if you already have a premium account, you're spending about 10 bucks a month, uh, roughly, for a World of Tanks premium account, which, you know, increased credits per battle, experience. Um, you also get, you know, more basically daily missions and some other little goodies and stuff where... Now, if you want to basically get the improved pass, which adds in blueprints, uh, basically the training booklets, 3D styles, and a bunch of you know little things in there, you're gonna have to pay Wargaming. So 6,500 gold is about 30 bucks on the NA server. It's gonna be an extra 10 bucks a month to now get you know those little goodies. However, you don't get them just from spending those 30 bucks. You now have to play. So kind of similar to the premium account to where if you just buy it, you're not getting anything from it unless you're playing. So you're going to have to spend the 6,500 gold to basically get that. If you do spend an additional 5,000 gold, and that's the maximum you can skip from the get-go until the third month, then you can pay an additional 250 gold per level. That's going to allow you to skip, you know, basically say right off the get-go to get the uh, bounty rammer. However... If you spend an additional amount of gold, it does kind of vault you up a bit, which once you get through to the elite progression, that's where you can then earn this and it kind of counts uh, your level uh, next to your name as you kind of level up. But then you get access to the elite progression, which from here, which if you notice 0, 65, 130, and if you're counting here, it's a lot 
fewer or it's you know it's a lot less points in between each level you're going to be earning a lot of bonds you know just from playing them so in a way wargaming somewhat indirectly charging people uh, to earn bonds faster so you have the bond shop for tanks you have the improved equipment still um, that that's what most people use it on i know that directives and stuff um, you know that's no longer a thing but for the most part it's just you know they're kind of charging people i feel like they don't need to do that like don't get me wrong i'm sure a lot of people are buying it i'm still on the fence on whether or not i'm gonna get it but uh basically i feel like they could have just when it comes to monetizing this get rid of this tie it to the world of tanks premium account that way i feel like more people who don't have the premium account would be more likely to get it if there's now an improved pass so it makes it even more attractive so wargaming has that recurring uh, basically revenue and then from there you know let people basically spend a gold if they want to skip you know skip past basically like the marathon um you know let them skip past basically the levels if they want um maybe you know to kind of counteract people getting bonds basically because they're kind of locked behind everything you know maybe add bonds into the basically standard uh, progression that way everyone's kind of earning them and you just kind of skip past the first little few levels but who exactly knows like i just think it's you know now we're going from they've essentially doubled um the cost to play world of tanks if you want to get everything you don't have to get everything don't get me wrong i don't think that you everyone needs to get this but it is 10 bucks a month is pretty it's pretty pricey to expect people to pay especially for just those rewards i just think you know if you're a newer player or you have a lot of grinds to do it is nice it does help your grinds but you are still going to need to get uh, credits you're going to be lacking credits versus everything that you're going to be ba basically able to train faster with the uh, blueprints all right last but not least though so i mentioned the coronavirus and world of tanks so basically this is from Watt express um, wargaming like a lot of places uh, they're working remotely and you know basically their employees indefinitely as of right now um, aren't coming into work from uh, my understanding so basically who knows what that's going to do when it comes to uh, updates for world of tanks and like this uh, big ammo rebalance and stuff that they're doing because you know it's not exactly easy say like i don't know how exactly game developers work but i can assume if everyone's kind of home you can still do your work and everything but you don't you don't have that collaboration as easily uh, when it comes to uh, discussing things but you know who knows and last but not least everyone's gonna rejoice more real tanks <laughs> uh basically super test a46 the british tier 6 you know light tank it's not actually a wheel tank by the way i just um just wanted to basically jerk your chain because at first i saw this and i'm like oh my god that thing looks like it has wheels uh more or less though um they did talk about uh british uh light tanks um li late or mid uh 2019 where they do think eventually they're going to be putting in uh, British wheeled light tanks. However, uh, this one, you know, basically has tracks. It does look pretty interesting. It is a tier six one. Who knows when or when it's going to come out because there's quite a few like mid tier, like tier six, like the down tier Black Prince. There's a, a French uh, M4 Sherman uh, kind of hybrid tank. You know, who knows when uh, they're going to come out. But now we have another one. It looks really zippy uh, when it comes down to it. Um, for the most part and you know we'll kind of see how it goes throughout super test if they end up changing anything uh, last but not least so when it comes to the uh, reward tanks here uh, last video i showed off some gameplay uh, this one just going over basically these tanks again um, the char future 4 um I, I still like it i think the ae phase 1 is still the best tank out of the bunch then the char future 777 um, i feel like are on actual equal uh, playing field now so small sample size when it comes to these tanks but honestly like the char future 4 you know you know do note small sample size you know a little under 2000 damage 600 assists and you know damage receive experience pretty much in line with the batch at 25 ap definitely a huge different play style you'll notice the higher experience on the tech tree bat chat um, that's due to the char future playing a little further out so you're not always spotting your own tanks 
thus you're not getting as much experience credits. But the tank is really nice. I like this tank. It's fun to play. You really have to think about pushing in close to dump those shells off because of the four second reload in between. But the high alpha kind of offsets it a little bit, you know, compared to the bat chat, which, you know, might fire faster, but you're doing a lot less damage per shot. But I've enjoyed this tank so far, and the gun being mounted really high up on it is nice being able to poke over stuff. Now, the 777 last video, like, I thought it was the worst out of the bunch. I've actually done pretty darn well on it. Um, again, you know, only two, 10 battles, small sample size, but I found with the turret being in the center, you're able to side scrape and play around corners a little bit better than, say, the T10 um, and kind of the ST1, but you're not able to, you know, still go around corners as well as the Object 257. But this tank's it's worked out pretty well. Uh, I still feel like just on paper, the stats, you know, it's not as good as the other tanks, but it's not too far behind uh, from the bunch, you know, that basically it shares tier 9 with, you know, for the Russian Tech 3 tanks. But it's a little bit better, um, especially if people aren't shooting heat rounds at you. The armor is a bit bouncy. Um, it, it is nice, basically. You'll bounce a lot of shots in this if, you know, you're not getting shot by A, higher tiers, and B, people shooting uh, heat rounds at you. Because uh, they can cut through your uh, angled armor. But I've liked this thing a little bit more. I still feel like it's kind of the weakest and uh, I guess least unique uh, tank out of the bunch. And then last but not least, so the A Phase 1. I personally like this tank the best. You're getting a better M103 in a sense when it comes to hold down. Because the armor works a lot, uh, a lot better when it comes to the turret. And I feel like this tank, uh, basically you're able to... Uh, it's the most flexible out of the bunch, I feel like, and I kind of like the gameplay. I am a little biased because I really like hold down and especially kind of American tanks, but I still feel like the AE Phase 1 is a little bit better. Char Future 4 is not behind. 277s, you know, kind of in line with the Future 4, depending on whether or not you kind of like that different gameplay. Um, in any event, thank you very much for watching, and yeah, I will see you guys next week for another What's New video. Have a good one.